big boss that's special It ain't no game, but they say I'm welcome to the second level Hello, Internet, and welcome back to the basement for this week's Codename Morpheus, episode 27. Uh, so, my name is Tom, and I'm here to fill you in in the world of the virtual this week. Alongside me is my partner in crime, Keegan. Uh, how has your week been, good sir? It's good. I'm a little tired today. I don't know what it <laughs> is. I didn't went to bed at a decent hour last night. Didn't play games till 4 a.m.? No, I actually was one of the first. We hopped off about midnight. Um, gotcha. But yeah, I've just been dragging this morning. I think it's because I took uh, sleep aid last night, so uh, that's still probably in my yeah, system. Yeah, that'll do it. I'm like, oh, Keep God. you a little, little sleepy. Uh, but I am excited because this is our first code name Morpheus with the new camera we got. Uh, so if we look slightly different, we watched the playback, so we know we look good. We look We look good. And... We're in 60 frames per second. That's true. So you I can't can... see the difference. So but those frames? There's 60 of them. There's 60 of them. <laughs> a second. Uh, yeah, so we got ourselves a fancy new camera. Uh, so we may look um, slightly different. Hopefully a little bit better. Uh, it's mostly actually for con stuff, but we figured, you know. If we're going to do it, let's get one for the studio uh, that we can Head also use Instagram at cons. to see our side-by-side -side of old camera versus new camera. Yeah, we'll... we'll uh, it's we'll, slightly different. We'll, uh, we'll do an Instagram thing. But uh, the really neat part about this one is, is it records audio and video at the same time to one card, uh, which then means our import times are cut in half, so that yeah. well, even the, less than half, yeah, I think. Yeah, dude, our import time. So give you an idea uh, yeah, before, because they're about an hour, hour and a half, as you guys know if you watch this, this but a little behind the scenes here is our, cut down, our time to import normally is like maybe 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah. You walked upstairs to get a drink, probably went to the bathroom and came back down. I was like, hey, it's done. And yeah. you're like, what? I was it like, was yeah. great. And uh, less fuzzies around us, less green fuzzies. Yep. Because, you know, our studio gives us green fuzzies for some reason. I don't know why. It's just in the air, I suppose. Um, so, <laughs> needless to say, we are back. And uh, we're ready to fill you in on the week's worth of virtual reality. And there's a lot uh, of stuff. There's going a lot on. of stuff, yeah. Uh, sales, especially. There's a whole fuck ton of sales so we're going to get into those shortly first of all uh let's get into the new releases for the week and um this week we can start out with one of the most anticipated games i think for a little while uh and that is apex construct um now apex construct is a wonderful little game i thoroughly enjoyed it we were lucky enough to have uh, a key from the devs so we got to play a little early we got our footage done early our review done early which doesn't happen very it's often up. so it's always feels pretty good uh those are all available on the channel thank if you, you andreas wanna... Yeah, if you want to go into the uh, the the deep Your and dirty. Your review starts off with this thing. Game was not even on my radar until Keegan said, "Check it out." And yeah, because I did. honestly didn't. I wasn't like paying attention to it at all, and it actually turned out to be a really good time. Like sci-fi wise, it's a solid game. Uh, it'll be our spotlight, so we'll talk. It'll about be our later. spotlight. Or check so the review. Continue watching the show, and you'll you'll learn my full view on it. But uh, just for now, know that it released, and it is thirty dollars if you want to pick it up. Uh, and then we have Run Dorothy Run, uh, which is also thirty dollars, and. And uh, this one I'm less enthused about. I don't know anything about it. I Yeah, I mean, honestly, I watched the trailer for it this morning. It's an endless runner based on, um, you know, The Wizard of Oz. And uh, I watched a little bit of it this morning, and I wasn't super pumped on the idea. I don't want to shit on it because I haven't played it, and I hate shitting on games that I haven't played on. Um, but I will say that uh, if you have $30 and you have a choice between Apex and this, I would probably lean the way of Apex, Apex quite considerably. Uh, so. Uh, and then, and this isn't really, um, this isn't a new release. This is actually like a really, really old release, but it got finally and this is like congratulations strange <laughs> games you got your vr patch it's up now it's in the store it's been updated so honor and duty uh has its vr patch finally and honor and duty is a cheap game it's only 6.99 so uh, i picked it up um i picked up the game specifically for this patch and i'm sure they'll have a lot of newcomers that'll buy the game just for this patch it is essentially a uh, multiplayer shooter but in full vr with aim control support and ds4 support um and from the people that have played it have said obviously there's a jank factor there but overall it's a good time does so, not support um, the moves yet from what i read on uh, twitter does not support the moves uh, yet yeah, they just said DS4 it's not and on aim. it's not up on their list of priorities aim was their priority mm -hmm. along with dual shock obviously yeah which is yeah, yeah. makes sense right yeah. so uh but apparently it's uh it's doing pretty good so that's exciting news uh massive congratulations to strange games we know how hard uh how much hard work they put in just trying to get that patch past the qa from sony so um that's finally available to go that went up last night so uh if you 
want to pick up Honor and Duty, seven dollars. It's uh, like the jack factor is real with that game, though. Like when he, when I went in to buy it, like it doesn't it doesn't even say like Honor and Duty. It's like Honor underscore and underscore Duty, and that's what the file like title is. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether that's like an in joke or whether that's just like that they didn't do it. Didn't, like yeah. I don't know. It's either way. Because I'm sure somebody copy and pasted Sony. Seven bucks, you get what you pay for. But hopefully, it's a uh, the VR edition is. Uh, I mean, is welcome. Price doesn't always mean it's going to be bad though. No, Rec, room, Rec room's free and it's a fucking blast. True that. True that. I uh, stand corrected. So uh, there's two more coming. They're not out uh, at the time that you watch this. They'll be out tomorrow, and that is Conrad the kitten. Uh, Nintendo dogs. I couldn't give a shit about. Oh, to be I honest, think this is awesome. <laughs> the Keegan's really I love, excited. I love the fact that this exists. I don't know if I'll be picking it up and playing it, but it exists. Allegedly, yeah, uh, it's a bit like uh, owning a virtual cat uh, called Conrad, I suppose. Uh, that is out Friday, and uh, I don't know pricing on that yet. Uh, it is uh, as of yet, uh, it's not up on the store. And Restless Spirit, which appears to be um, a horror game of some kind, potentially Asian, just judging by the artwork that accompanies it. Uh, and yeah, so that's that one's coming out too. The spirit of a girl appears appears in front of a father whose daughter is lost. Mm. This man, filled with grief in his heart, follows the guidance of the spirit, wandering ever deeper into the forest. There you go. That's so, the Forest Creepers, Asian horror, it's all good. Uh, uh, I need to, I need like to read the cat wondering. one, though. Go on, read the cat one. Immerse yourself in the virtual world of Conrad the Kitten and experience the first virtual cat that feels like a real one. As opposed to all the other virtual cats. I suppose there was a uh, cat lateral dogs. damage. Nintendo cats. Nintendo dogs. No, but like virtual, like, not like, I know that's... That's a like, virtual. No, it doesn't really count. Not VR virtual. It doesn't say VR. It's just digital. It just says virtual. It's a digital dog. It's still virtual. God, get out of here. All right, so... Um, get out of here with your rightness. <laughs> so, so uh, those are your new releases for this week. Really exciting. Um, I want to top this on as well. I'm going to tag this on. I'm not going to make it its own news segment, but we officially got the, uh, the release date for Moss. And that is... A week from today. Well, a week from yesterday. Yeah, next week. So uh, next Tuesday, or oh, this coming Tuesday, uh, you can get your hands on Little Quill and her wonderful world, unless you're Keegan and you don't want to play it because of snakes. Um, but uh, for those of you that are looking forward to Moss, the official uh, launch date for that got announced, and that'll be next week. So really exciting that'll be there. So I'm going we'll to say we go to the sales. Yeah. Because you normally say what the full price is and mm. what sale price is. Mm. Just say the sale price because there is no joke. There's a lot. Like 30 I think to 40. all of the... I think all PSVR, PSVR is on sale. games are on sale. <laughs> Not all of them, but like a, like eighty percent of them, right? So so there's and a PS I'll, Plus sale. I'll, I'll do what you. Yeah, you have to have PS Plus for this. Yeah, but I will do the the since it's long. I'll do the yes no. Get it or not get opinion. it. Yeah. All right. See, this this is always fun. This is always a fun time. So <laughs> strap on, uh, strap in. And there get are ready to take a it. ton of games on sale for PS Plus members this week. Uh, normally, I will I will do like that. It's this down from this, but for the purposes of this, I'll go ahead and just Although say. We'll be here for is. like 50 minutes. Yeah. It'll be, this would be the podcast. And Keegan will give you the opinion of whether you should get it or not. And it won't um, be just my personal opinion. It'll be based on what the community as a whole that I've seen. So like yeah, Resident we'll Evil, you, I've not played, we'll but a, I'm going to say yes to Resident a Evil. A wide opinion. Yes. Um, so are you guys ready? Because this is, is going to be rapid fire because this week is nuts for sales. Okay. And here we go. Go. Resident Evil 7 Gold Edition, $40. Yes. And by the way, before I get too heavy into it, Gold Edition. We're already stopped. The Gold Edition is all of it. So yes. that's all the DLCs and everything. Because I, I, I think if it's an edition, I need to say what's in it. Uh, so that's like End of Zoe, that's Not a Hero, that's uh, Bad Footage 1, Bad Footage 2, all of it. Uh, okay. Doom VFR, $21. Maybe. Skyrim VR, $42. Maybe. You can get it cheaper physically. Super Hot VR, 1875 Yes. Arizona Sunshine twenty dollars. Yes. VR carts eighteen dollars. No. Crystal Rift three ninety. If you're into cave dungeon dwellers. Dark Net four fifty. No. Moto Racer four ten. Yes. Radial G Racing of Old fifteen. No. Dirt Rally VR seventeen fifty. Hell yeah. Farpoint thirty. Yes. Rigs fifteen. Yeah. Well, you might already have that. It was free. Star Trek Bridge Crew twenty five. Hell yeah. Eagle Flight 12. Yes. Loading Human Chapter 1 12. No. Paranormal Activity VR 20. Yes. Trackmania Turbo 12. Yes. Archangel 9. Hell yeah. Dino Frontier 2250. No. Res Infinite 15. Yes. Spark 15. Yes. The Assembly 15. No. The Invisible Hours 15. Yes. Time Machine VR 15. Yes. 
Uh, werewolves within nine. Yes. I expect you to die. Seven fifty. Fuck yes. Ultra wings. Eighteen seventy five. Hell yeah. Windland. Seven fifty. Yes. A hundred foot robot golf. Five. Fuck this game. <laughs> Batman Arkham VR twelve. Yes. Carnival Games VR six. Yes. Don't knock twice. Ten. Yeah. Drive Club VR 6. Yes. N Space 6. Yeah. Headmaster 10. Yes. Here They Lie 6. No. League of War VR Arena 15. Yes. Apollo 11 6. Yes. Bloody Zombie 750. Yes. Castle Storm VR 750. No. Cat Lateral Damage 3. No. Chess Ultra 780. Hell yeah. Dex 250. No. Dick Wild 750. Yes. Discovery 9. Don't know that one. Ghosts in the Toy Box 9. <laughs> no. Eve Gunjack 250. 50. Yes. Infinite Mini Golf 9. No. Justice League VR 5. If you like Justice League, yes. Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes yes. 750. Light Tracer 950. Yes. Megaton Rainfall 12. Yes. Moonshot Galaxy 5. No. Mortal Blitz 10. Yes. NBA 2K VR Experience Fuck 450. No. Fuck no. Pinball FX2 VR 750. Yes. Perfect 5. No. no. VR Ping Pong 450. <laughs> yes. Dead Hungry 5. No. VR World 6. Fuck Fuck yeah. Psychonauts in Rhombus of Ruin 10. Yes. Roller Coaster Legends 450. Eh. Shooty Fruity 16. Yeah. Smashbox Arena 6. Yes. Snow Fortress 1125. No. Special Delivery 5. No. Star Wars Battlefront Ultimate Edition, where you're basically just playing Buying it the for the X Wing mission. $6. Yes. Starship Disco 250. Yes. Static 10. Yes. Stifled 12. Yes. Stike Cut Masters 5. No. <laughs> Did I say st I said Stike Cunts, didn't I? Sorry. <laughs> Stunt Cut <laughs> Masters 5. I was, I, was gonna, I was just gonna go with it. <laughs> Super Stardust Ultra VR 6. Yes. Surgeon Simulator 10. Yes. The Bellows 3. No. Brookhaven 10. No. Lost Bear 975. Kind of. The Rabbit Hole 375. No. Solace Project 10. Yes. Theseus 10. Yes. Thumper 6. Fuck yeah. To Who Kabuto 5. Burst don't, Battle 18. Don't know. <laughs> Tumble VR 3. Hell yeah. Unearthing Mars 750. No. Russia Blood 6. Yes. VEV 5. No. And Viri VR $5. No. Do you agree with most of those? Yeah, you were pretty good. Cool. You were pretty there's on point few, with well, that. There's a few of them. I was like, I don't know. Some of them are like, eh. Let me um, pick your highlights. Let me pick your highlights, yeah, okay? Because there's some... Obviously, Resident Evil 7 Gold, if you don't own this game by now, $40 is a fucking no-brainer. I'd say super hot. It's a no-brainer. Skyrim is super hot for sure. Arizona uh, and Doom are like on the fence. Yeah, Dirt Rally, um, I would say. If you're getting a racing game, Dirt Rally is the one to get. Dirt Rally for $17.50 is great, but also Drive Club is like 6 bucks. Yes. Drive Club is not a bad game no, at all. But like, dirt, in really my opinion, like Dirt it. Rally is the, is the best racing game in VR. Mm. So if, you want, if you're want, if you getting one racing Correct. game for the best experience, if you have a choice, yeah. Dirt, dirt, dirt the Rally is biggest, the one. In my opinion, the biggest and best value for money in this is Archangel. And Star Trek. Archangel, $9, though. Yes. When it came out, it was 40 Yes. It's been dropped to 30 cents for the permit price drop, but nine dollars for that experience is a fucking no, no brainer. Uh, also, I expect you to, I expect you to die as well for seven fifty versus mm. twenty five is way. I worth expect it. you to die as that well. The invisible fun. hours for fifteen um, is really Beth, good. Beth Beth said she wants to come over and play that because she had a sure. blast playing that. Ultra Wings eighteen seventy five. That's great. Uh, Headmaster for ten is great. Yeah. So there's a really really good stuff in there. Uh, as you can tell, very long list. Yes. Um, and when I tell you the first bit of news for this week, you may realize What's why there happening? is a very huge PSVR sale. This week and that is because the actual psvr unit itself is getting a sale this week you know what i like about this what's that somebody posted in the group the other day that says guess what psvr bundle on sale i got a tax refund it's like it's made in heaven right yeah, I saw that. yeah. <laughs> uh, like, did you see the sale for the games now? yeah and then you can get the games on top of that too so this sale lasts from the 18th of the uh, february which was a day or two ago uh through till the third of march mm -hmm. and it is a sale on the bundle copy as well. Um, so the lowest price model, the Gran Turismo bundle, includes a required PS4 camera, the PSVR headset, copy of Dr Gran Turismo Sport, all for just $199. This is the older model. Mm -hmm. Additionally, headset. there's the Doom VFR bundle, which includes the game, the camera, and a newer model headset for $299. Uh, it says it feels like the weakest deal of the bunch, um, as the new headset model's only real improvement is the HDR pass-through. You could save money buying the GT bundle and then buying uh, Doom VFR separately. Uh, that'd net you enough cash to try and pick up the PS Aim controller, I need to get the aim which controller is one of the point. better ways of playing the game for sure. Finally, there's the Big Daddy Skyrim VR bundle that will run you $349. This bundle includes the game 
game, the camera, the new headset model, and two move controllers. If you haven't played Skyrim in VR yet, then you are really missing out. Um, so it says, all of these sales are while supplies last at participating retailers, and none of them include a PS4 itself, which is obviously needed. Uh, GameStop, Amazon, Walmart, Best Buy, Target are all supposed to be participating in this sale. Uh, so big news if you are on, if you've been watching this show thinking every week, man, these guys are having so much fun in their little VR world, and I want to join in. Uh, now is the time. I would say that 199 bundle is a fucking steal. I don't think that the second gen is enough to, no. to pay another $100. Um, I will say the move controllers being absent from it is maybe worth looking at, but yeah. My finger's going down. God, no, I, dear, uh, is that because you have a point to make? Yes. You're going to point to make no, a point? No, so one of the things I, and I've, I feel like I'm saying this way more now, because if you remember, I was very, very not hyped on PSVR because I feel like there wasn't a lot of things going on. I feel like there's a lot of shovelware. There's a lot of, why am I getting this? And right now we have a lineup of games that is fantastic, and people are now understanding that PSVR is, I think, here to stay. I think people are finally getting that it is not... It's, it's it still, ain't a flash in the it's pan. It's still kind of a gimmick to a certain extent because of the price point, but it is not a gimmick when you play it, if that makes sense. It could be foreseen as being gimmicky until you put the headset on your yes. face. And then and once you put it in there, then you kind of realize... And the fact yeah. that people are now getting headsets and they have this massive sale for people because people that buy headsets now, like us, we've had it since launch. We go through every week of like, okay, we've kept up with things as they've gone along. There's people who have not played Batman. And it's funny because like for me, I don't think I would play Batman now. Because I've already played it, but if I hadn't played it, that's a fantastic experience that I had back then. Yeah. And I forget sometimes, because my bar has been raised so high for how many games i played, that you kind of have to go back to zero with no expectation. Mm -hmm. Like, when I play uh, Ocean Descent, it's cool, it's whatever, I have ever played it, but seeing people react to that game, and you're like, in my brain, I'm like, you have no idea what else you can do right now. Mm. Um I said Beth wants to come over and play Expect You to Die. Dan wants to come over and play uh, Ultra Wings and all this kind of stuff. Ultra so Wings it's, it's is like, fantastic. It's like one of these things where I'm just like, these are what you can do now. And if you're new to PSVR, take advantage of the sale. Please do, because both headset or games because I'm kind of jealous that we didn't get them at the prices that they're at now. Yeah, we, we uh, well, you know, we, but we to be fair, did not pay for our headset no. because of you lovely folks out there in, in uh, Level 2 Legion. You guys actually um, but this is a steal funded the headset, headset for us. Or, uh, we paid full, like, 500 buckaroos mm -hmm. for it, um, but it was worth every penny, and clearly, I hope that you think we've done right by you in terms of uh, what we've done with the headset that you provided us. Uh, we have a weekly podcast, we do reviews, we do game plays i think we i think we lived up to our end of the bargain yes. at least we are we're still going the bargain we're still, we're still going. going and we're making it better new camera but, but now is pants. but now is the time to jump on jump on yeah. jump into it because i don't think you're gonna get a much better sale outside of potentially a black friday sale no. this year yeah i think so, you're right and it's building you up to play the games now so when the good games well we've already started with sprint vector and uh apex and we've got moss next moss week next so week. i feel like we're at the the point where it's just going to be Boom, 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 boom. There's going to be some sort of, I don't want to say hyped game, but more anticipated game oh, yeah. than like, oh, what's this I mean, game? we still have like, fire, then, then is, it, what is it Fire Zero or Firewall, Firewall. Zero or whatever? Uh, won't, it won't be Run yeah. Dorothy Run every week. No, it definitely won't, hopefully. Um, so, um, that being said, last week you may remember us having discussion about there was a couple uh, PSVR games that were getting physical releases, which I thought was really interesting because they were older digital titles that were sort of getting repackaged with a physical release. And I was we kind of had this sort of back and forth debate a little bit about like is it really worth repackaging old digital titles in physical media? But then you know for PSVR library, it's uh, it's kind of cool that there that just that there's more physical versions of it out there that it did so well that they feel confident enough to release a digital and the, and uh, physical the version exposure of exposure that you'll see from me being in a storefront. Uh, exactly, and from it being in a storefront. Uh, even though we've both kind of agreed that it sucks to have to take the headset off to swap discs out. Yes. Unless you have a, a second with you that can just be like, you know, hey, Go, go, swap it out. Um, so don't do that to your wife, though. <laughs> that being said, yeah, don't do hey, that. Hey, wife, put the new not game in. Not while you have, not while you can't see. Um, my wife, by the way, tried to trick me. She, I told her I was playing a horror game and reviewing one the other day, right? Mm -hmm. And then this is a side note. Um, I was doing a horror game. I uh, I hear like a little bit of fumbling around, and I'm like, I'm kind of curious. And then I take off my headset, I take off my my earphones, I look here, and I see her phone lying in the middle of the rug, face up. <laughs> 
with the camera recording. So I go up to it and I see myself and I like pick it up and I'm like, this is weird. And then I like, I'm like, you? why is her phone here? And also, why is it recording? And then I turn the corner and she's hiding up the stairs because she was trying to come up and sneak attack me in the middle. Don't sneak attack your husbands, ladies. It's scary or business animals. when you're playing horror, horror games and vice versa. Don't sneak attack your ladies, guys. Uh, anyway, or your guys, guys, or girls, girls, the, or guys, guys, or girls. <laughs> what? Don't sneak attack your significant other. Anybody is what we're I saying. Um, okay, so with all that being said. Virtual Rickality, the mm -hmm. Rick and Morty VR game, is getting not only a physical uh, release, a collector's edition physical release, which I think is really cool because this is, I think, one of the first collector's, collector's. edition VR uh, games. Did that Skyrim have one? Skyrim had the bundle, I don't think but they didn't have a collector's, collector's edition. edition. No, the bundle. no, I don't think it did. Uh, so, and it has a release date now, which is super awesome. So, for those of you that really enjoyed Accounting Plus, uh, that is Squanch Games and uh, Crows, Crows, Crows. So, those, uh, that team of guys, Squanch Games, obviously, particularly, uh, and Justin Roiland, uh, created an, uh, another virtual reality game that is actually based off of the TV show. Rather than just doing like random voices with weird characters, this is a Rick and Morty game. Uh, and it looks a lot of fun. Uh, and it's out officially on April 10th. Now, the collector's edition uh, has been revealed as well. And here's what you're going to get inside your collector's edition. I might do it um, just for the one thing. You're going to get a uh, Funko Pop Rick. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're a Funko collector, you're going to get a sweet Funko. I wonder if it's the Rick with the V. I oh, no, it's not. It's, you can see it on You can kind of see it on the side. It looks like it might be the Rick from in-game. So yeah. I don't know if it'll be an exclusive or not. Uh, but you also get a double-sided uh, poster as well, which is exclusive poster so yeah. it's the only place you can get it is here it's double sided I wonder how much so you have be. artwork on either side they don't have price anywhere yeah and it looks to me like uh well, literally, you'll see it behind us where there's a pretty boxes. good art yeah it's pretty, uh, one pretty thing good i do want to point out from this game because the packaging is here mm. it requires the move if you mm. see in the box it says you'll need the headset the camera and the moves yep. so if you don't have moves don't pick up rick out uh virtual recality or pick up moves when you buy it Correct. Because it because that's one thing. Because we had a we had an episode a few or few weeks ago, maybe over a month or two ago now, where it's like, what do you recommend for people who first time getting PSVR? Read the packaging and what <laughs> controllers controllers it supports. That's yeah. very important because you can get a game that. There are moves. quite a few different ways to do it nowadays. Yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely worth double-checking so that. the you'll need versus compatible with yeah. are two different things. Yeah. And, you know, moves are also not the easiest damn things to find. No. Uh, because... Because we can do 2.0, right, Tom? What I fucking love about this, though, is that the, you know... And I know that somewhere after Sony initially released the Move controllers and the Move in general flopped, that there was a warehouse full of these things somewhere well, you see in the, like Arizona desert somewhere. No, well, did you see the interview mm. with, I can't remember who it was with. No. It was somebody who just left or is leaving Sony or just left Sony saying that the Moves were designed with PSVR in mind, but they did not know what PSVR looked like at that point. Interesting. That so is they, interesting. Yeah, it was from 2000, I want to say it was from like 2007 or eight is when wow. I started thinking about this that's um, crazy but they couldn't but they did not know they knew what they wanted to do they just didn't know how they were going to do it so they just like they made the starting point and then they were looking for the the, the next thing after which yeah, is i suppose the, where the glowing orbs came from the, yeah because yeah. the because the the moves people thought were in response to the wii yeah and the connect which kind of was at the time a couple levels but ahead. they had a yeah. ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> careful like fun almost went down sorry but yeah, I just like I just had this weird image in my head of like this warehouse of unsolved I'm sure you're somewhere, right. and then you know, it all then over the, the place. Uh, PSVR comes out, and suddenly like they're fucking hotcakes, and you can't get enough of them, which I thought was hilarious. Until 2.0 comes Next out. Next piece of news is super exciting for you, my friend. I included this specifically for you because I believe you've actually said was, these words before. Was this your official make Keegan like PSVR? No, this is not. News? I mean, this is just this is a happy <laughs> byproduct of this news is that you will like it more. One of the things that I've always asked you during this show is what mm -hmm. type of game would you like to see? in VR, and you've always said to me that you would love to see a tycoon game, specifically something like Roller Coaster Tycoon. Uh, well, Roller Coaster Tycoon Joyride releasing on consoles during the first half of 2018, and that is a VR version of Roller Coaster Tycoon. How do we feel? I want to see what it entails before I get okay. too excited for it. Um, if it's because it's called Joyride, so if it's still the part creator and then I can ride my rides, all for it, That's what probably you full in, ready to go. If it is just 
ride pre-built rides that you can put down, not as much fun. Okay. So if I can build a park Depends still and, do, how and much there is. still do Roller Coaster Tycoon traditionally with a management standpoint, all for it. If it's not that, I'll be a little, little more leery on it. And price point, obviously, if I wouldn't pay. For me, Roller Coaster Tycoon is like a $30 to $40 game. If it's 60 not going to do it Okay. Um, unless there's a sale. Well, here's a bit of news for you. Earlier today, well, it's obviously not today, but... This is from the article. Um, the Peggy rating system released a new rating for a brand new entry in the Roller Coaster Tycoon series. The title of the game, Roller Coaster Tycoon Joyride, has been given an age rating of three. Perfect for you. Which is fairly unsurprising given how non controversial the titles are. Alongside the release of the rating, a recent investor's briefing from Atari via Reddit revealed that the game will also be coming to consoles in the first half of 2018. While no concrete release information has been revealed yet, Atari did reveal that a virtual reality module would be coming to the console versions of the game, uh, meaning that PlayStation VR owners will be able to craft some coasters in virtual reality. For more on the upcoming title, read a brief description of the game from Atari. Experience the thrill of your life with a new roller coaster manufacturer offering an entirely immersive attraction thanks to a virtual reality module for the first time in the series. Expect to release in the first half of 2018. Uh, of course, this isn't the only roller coaster tycoon game that's out. You can take a look at some of the other titles below. Uh, a bunch touch more, and yeah, coming your, down there. Uh, but uh, it looks like, at least from that sentence, that potentially you will be not only uh, writing, potentially, but also designing. In my VR, my nitpick cool. is the word "some." Right. You that's, think they're gonna have that's like where, a that's where is this a G, is this a GT Sport moment where yeah. it's like okay, you've got four in VR, and the, which let's still be let's, cool. Let's be real. It, it's it's let's an be added real. Value, still roller coaster tycoon. My only concern with that then, as I've said also many times on Indie, please add details, is control scheme for management games on console. Not necessarily the greatest, but if they if they get the control scheme and there's maybe a few VR coasters, but the game itself is really, really solid when it comes to being a roller coaster tycoon, all for it. I'm super happy about that. Um, this, the problem I have right now is Roller Coaster Tycoon as a brand is not the same people who made Roller Coaster Tycoon before. Right. Those Planet are Planet Coaster. That's Planet Coaster. Kind of taken over, right? Well, Planet Coaster is former Roller Coaster Tycoon. Right. And but it's Roller like Coaster, more yeah. popular, I would say. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's the devs who made Roller Coaster Tycoon back mm -hmm. in the day. So that's where I'm like, I've lost faith in the brand, but I'm excited because I love Roller Coaster Tycoon. So if they do it right, Man, I'm all in this. If they if they screw up a few things, it's gonna be mad about it's it. It's a little shaky. That's fair. All right. So moving on, uh, we have some really really exciting news in the world of Sprint Vector, which I haven't played yet, and I need to. You really do. Because I was sick. It is a hell of a time. To, yeah, and I was I, concerned about motion sickness. I really of, really. Uh, there's no motion sickness. You'll be fine. Oh well, when you're already sick. Yeah, maybe if you're already sick. <laughs> I'm sorry, um, sick. No, I play Sprint Vector. Uh, I reviewed it. It's up on the channel, of course, if you need to see it. But um, but Sprint Vector to me was a very very interesting title because I damn near killed myself playing that game uh, because I didn't really comprehend. And I think that everyone how out had of shape this. you are. Well, no, I know how out of shape I am. <laughs> that I mean, that much I did know. But what I think is that a lot of people that start out in Sprint Vector kind of feel like the only way to win is to go as fast as humanly possible, it's, and it's not about that. Have you ever it's heard not the phrase? About how quickly have you, you ever heard that. the phrase? You got to slow down to speed up. No, but it's so an in interesting racing. Phrase. In racing, you got to slow down, hit your marks, be smooth versus trying to go as quick as you that can. That is exactly yeah. That's a great analogy so for that's, this game. That's racing. Uh, this the, the thing about Sprint Vector is that it is really got quite a depth to it in terms of technique. Mm -hmm. So there are three different tutorials just based upon like basic, uh, intermediate and advanced techniques. I know that there's wall climbing and stuff in there. that. Yeah, there's, there's, there's climbing, there's flying, there's all kinds of weird stuff in there and uh, double jumping and stuff. So like the, really the technique part of it is the part that you need to get down. And once you get the technique part down, you can actually do like minimal movement and minimal speed, but still maintain a high velocity and kind of is get through the tracks. Is there private okay. matches in Sprint Vector yet? Because that should be a thing, I so we can know. race against each other. I don't know. When I played, I don't we remember check. seeing anybody. I think you probably could do it. Um, I don't know if it's in the game. I will or say not. that online was the single most fun I've had in an online VR title, and that includes Rec Room. Um, I had a blast, and mostly because everyone was just as fucking lazy as me. So, it, like, <laughs> literally, like, before the start of a race, this guy like answers the phone. I think he forgot that there was a microphone on his headset. He's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, give me a minute. <sighs> He's like dying on the phone. And then like after the race, all you can hear in the lobby is everyone going, 
<laughs> it's so funny. So what uh, you're, so what you're yeah, saying is great. during my 24-hour live stream, this will be the thing that wakes me back up. Uh, that's a really good, or puts me to sleep really when I'm good done. try. Yeah, so Sprint Vector, the amazing game. Play before I go to bed. But here's the news. Uh, Sprint Vector, in order to maintain their already fabulous online uh, sort of uh, player base that they have going right now, they are starting community challenges. And that is awesome because that means that people will keep coming back to their game, which is, of course, what we want out of a VR online, online. title. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of info on the first bunch of challenges known as simply the February challenges. So some of these may have been in past already, but I'm still going to do them all so you can get an idea for what's upcoming as well. So February 15th to the 18th, they did uh, challenge number one, which is time trial termination. Uh, the time to beat was one minute and 15 seconds, I assume, on a particular track that you would go into. So it these, looks like, by the way, I just want to point out, these look like they're weekend challenges. So they're um, only on weekends. Would seem so, yeah. They're only on weekends. Best, I mean, yeah, best well, really chance to get people I know, in. but I'm just saying so people know it's not, if you go in on a, on a Wednesday and you try and beat the challenge, it's not going to be there. So it's weekend. Fair enough. Uh, challenge two, February 22nd through to February 25th, which is uh, coming up in a couple days, I believe. Um, coin Collect, the premiere. So this is a brand new uh, challenge. It's never been seen before, and I assume it plays much like Sonic. <laughs> You're just kind of got to be fast and you mean collecting Mario, coins. Mario, because Sonic collects rings. Kind of a combination, yeah. Mario collects coins. Uh, yeah, but like, you know, when you played the Sonic games, you were collecting... <laughs> Shut up. Um, March 1st through March 4th, challenge number three is time trial trip hop. Uh, don't know what that is, but if it's, it's playing trip hop while you're running, it sounds great to me. Uh, and lastly, March 8th through to March 11th, challenge number four, hardcore drift away. So which is, like I'm, assuming, yeah, I'm assuming you learning the drifting. Now, the drifting in Sprint Vector is really interesting. Um, this is for your knowledge, and not for your knowledge if you've been on the fence about picking it up. People complaining on the PSVR forums about the fact there's no smooth turning in uh, Sprint Vector. Well, guess what? There is. It's called drifting. So what you have to do is, while you're doing your kind of your running like this, you have to hold the uh, move button and the trigger button on either the right or left hand, depending on which way you want to drift. And then you have to hold this arm either close to your body or far away from your body for how like tight you want the drift to be. Mm -hmm. So this is the level of depth that goes into the you know to how, the small things on this game. So it's we incredible. we always talk about. In my opinion, I think the, the 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 one thing PlayStation doesn't do as well as the PC headsets is tracking. Hmm. Did you ever have an issue with tracking when you try to do something? Not at all. Okay. No. Cause, cause I did. I will say this before I started playing because I knew it was going to be kind of a uh, up and jumping around game. I did put my camera up high. So I do think that that is maybe something to consider um, because usually cause my the Vi camera because with the Vive you have you the know. two cameras, so if even if you get turned around, you no, still have no tracking issues. Because they do have like actual incremental turning if you do get stuck. But mm -hmm. honestly, if you're playing the game right, you shouldn't be turned around. Cool. Like you should be able to, to fix it yourself. Yeah. Um, That's why that yeah, was just some, something I didn't know. Yeah. Didn't know. Uh, and this is my favorite piece of news for this week: uh, Drunken Bar Fight developer admits fucking up and promises a fix. Uh, so you, if you have picked up Drunken Bar fight as uh, I have you may uh, know that drunken bar fight left out a very um, let's say demanded <laughs> not just demanded but kind of like there's no reason why this shouldn't be in your game feature, and that was turning uh, left or right at all. Uh, so but there's a there's kind of a uh, let me explain. So you can turn, but only with your head. It was kind of like a head tracking situation where you press the button to move forward, and then if you look left, you kind of go that way. If you look right, you kind of go that way. But then when you're going backwards, you'd hold the backwards button, and you'd have to like do the same thing. <laughs> like you'd be like making snake moves as you're sort of slithering back to sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Uh, back to like you know where the weapons and stuff are, but you couldn't just like straight up turn around. You'd have to do like essentially a three point turn mm -hmm. in the car to turn around and go back the other way, which is unacceptable uh, as far as you know for a, a premium V. Well, not premium, but you know what I mean, like a VR title. So, and here's the thing that I'm kind of like. Half of me kind of loves that it wasn't there and that mm -hmm. I had to do stupid shit to try and turn around because the game is called Drunken Bar Fight. How much more drunk can you feel than you can't turn around, right? You're just staggering like left and right, trying to figure out a way to turn. And, like, so it kind of felt almost like part of the experience for me. And I actually really enjoyed this game. I knew what I was getting into when I, when I got into it. I didn't expect anything from it other than the opportunity to punch up a couple ragdoll physic people. And that's what I got. And I had a great time doing it. Uh, I did get really dark at one point, but besides that, the developer of Drunken Bar Fight chimed into a Reddit thread and said, 
I screwed up, and we will fix it in an update. We had turning in, and I pulled it out because I thought it was disorientating. I didn't realize there were so many people who were already used to smooth turning that they expect it. Thanks for letting us know. Uh, so yeah, apparently they took it away, which makes it almost worse uh, than just like leaving it out uh, to begin with. But for a game called Drunken Bar Fight, the fact they left out like a primary move option to me just mm -hmm. I thought was hilarious. Um, have you like seen any more on this? Did you watch my? Did you watch my review? No, you I didn't? haven't watched that one yet. Uh, I've been busy with Shame other stuff. You. I've been doing indie stuff. Fair enough. So I haven't had a chance to it. The 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 so the reason he left it out was disorienting, which could be true. I mean, we don't know. Maybe it maybe it didn't work in that game for some reason. Who knows? Maybe it had some I issues. I think it would be fine. I know. I'm just trying to give him benefit of the doubt right. for once. But yeah, I mean, honestly, there's not there's only two buttons in the game. No, three. Well, I guess if you include the trigger to pick shit up, uh, there's three buttons um and you can't flip people off as well but although here's the thing like even flipping people off like is not guaranteed to work like when you so you're drunk in the game as well mm -hmm. so your character's already kind of like a little bit like whoa, leaning over and shit but then when you um like when you press to do stuff with your hands there's no solid movement they just kind of go like they just crank around like that and occasionally you'll get that and you go Whoa! and like that's when the person will get upset with you it's hilarious uh so honestly i had a great time with it i thought it was was really and i felt like i had my ass kicked by the end of it i felt like exhausted because i was literally swinging you know like for the fences and i was like punching down on people's faces i almost punched my laptop a couple times well that's um dumb. yeah that was really dangerous um but i had a great time so i will say um it's funny to me this news just because it's a drunken bar fight game and this is a Instead of saying, look, we screwed up fixing they, it. As yeah, long as they, they were fix open it. about it. Yeah. And then in the next patch, it'll be out there. So that's, you know, uh, I had a conversation with one of our, um, is it Jotaku, I think, is mm -hmm. one of our, our our regular viewers and um, about this. And he, he was pretty upset about it. And uh, and I get it. I totally get it. Like, it's, it is it is frustrating as shit not being able to turn around. But a part of me was just like, you know, that's what it feels like to be drunk and fighting people. So I kind of, I was all right with it. I never but, thought um, anybody well It's nice that they're going to put the option in, though. Uh, so Battlezone devs finally answered a question that it's been uh, haunting them for a really long time and that is are you ever going to support the hotus and the answer is no <laughs> so the very quick there's no news. plans no plans currently no plans currently and let's be honest that game's been out since launch they're probably working on something else they're probably not going to do it yeah uh which is a bit of a shame um but i mean me personally, I never really considered the Hotus to be useful in a tank. Um, I could, I guess, I could kind of see how it would work. I really but... want a flight simulator that supports because I would so buy that if we had like a real flight simulating game that was not all because Ultra Wings is I haven't played it yet. I, it's on my list of games. I've got like three games. You, that I need shame to play. on you. The problem shame is Tom. Problem is Tom. Overwatch. <laughs> it's the problem. That's you know, now my you, yeah. problem. Yeah. Welcome to my life that now. Is now. I my got problem. Tom hooked in Overwatch finally. Yeah, we'll talk about um, it. <laughs> but my problem is uh, like. It's not a true sim with like ultra wings, so I want to I want to get I want to get like a true sim, have those flight sticks. Man, that would be it's incredible. a really unique experience to fly in VR. I think I because sh I showed it to Beth the other day, uh, ultra wings, and she was like, "That looks awesome." And I was like, "Yeah, I didn't." Because it's funny because I talk about having people over for game nights, and I have people over for game nights, but you're always leery about letting people go that much further until they build up their legs. Because we've been playing for, I guess over a year now. I do not get faced anymore yeah, at all. You, well, I still do. Well, it's been a while, actually. Yeah. Uh, but it, but, but it's one of those things like where like, we've built it up and we're used to it, but other people, you don't know their tolerance, so you, you start them low just to kind of see where they're at. Like, Bertrand gets it real... Like, when we were playing Record, he gets real dizzy real quick. Yeah. Um, but, like... Dan, who came over and played Super Hot one day, he had a fucking blast in that. Like yeah. he felt it by the end of it, but like, I mean, you gotta be careful. I have to spend countless hours in VR. Yeah, but you're also thinking doing... the, the the anomaly to a lot of people. Well, yeah, no, I think I'm what, a good measuring stick. But what I'm saying is like, that I think stick. the only reason why I build up a tolerance is because I'm the review guy for PSVR, so it's kind of like. Well, even from the get go, I'm... though, you didn't get as sick as I did. No, that's true. Which is weird because I get like like I get like motion sick in cars and stuff, so I don't know I why. Don't. Yeah, it's weird. I get sick from doing. Circles. I watch an awful lot of fan footage movies. I wonder if that kind of Could helped be. build my tolerance Maybe. up. But I also play a lot of first person. Anyway, um, yeah, it is definitely something you have to get used to. So for those people that are just buying a PSVR this, uh, this with a sale that's on right now, do bear in mind that you may not want to jump two feet into Skyrim. Yeah. Um, just because you may feel a little woozy from the get go. I but got sick going upstairs in Skyrim. You can totally build up your tolerance. You just need to play more. And uh, bigger and bigger sections every day until you can sit in there and, for And if you have a pro, long. it was funny. Like, when I played Skyrim on your pro, I lasted longer. I th or I felt better than when I played it by myself. 
That's interesting. But that's also because my eyes aren't straining to make things in focus, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, I guess so. So, Yeah, that's one of the things about Apex I really liked, actually, was reading things was, like, super easy. And, like, there's so many games and where that's the before text the day is, one like, patch. impossible. So, yeah. I, I, yeah, don't know yeah, yeah. What, I don't know what's in the day one patch, yeah. but... Uh, so, we got a couple uh, interesting sort of new games on the horizon for you. We'll do a little bit of a quick fire for you right now. The first of which is called VRFC. Uh, any guesses as to what that game might be? Virtual reality fecal... Colon. <laughs> fecal colon. Yes. Yes. It's all about it. colons. Uh, no, no it's VRFC. All about FC, colons. FC, obviously, for those of you that are English, uh, will know is a, an abbreviation for football club. So, yes, virtual reality football club. Now, this one really actually blows my mind a little bit. Let me read you a little bit about it before we talk about it. VRFC takes eight football ready enthusiasts kicking, tackling, and running into the world's first FPF. That's first-person football game, in case you're wondering. Uh, this first-person soccer game played in VR where you control the running, dribbling, and kicking motions with the unique agile locomotion mechanic gives you the ability to play a game of five-a-side football in VR with the goalies being controlled by AI. Play in competitive online eight-player matches with global leaderboards or tackle your friends in a private match for a little friendly competition. And with fully customizable game settings, you can tailor your agile VR experience to suit you. VRFC is not just your typical football experience. It's energetic and fun, an innovative upper body workout, burning calories as you play. Maybe we should wait uh, for this one to drop before we do our exercise thing. <laughs> Virtual reality is a great place to exercise as you're transported to a world of fun and games, and you can feel the burn, but it doesn't feel like a workout. Get moving in VR, introducing agile locomotion. At Cherry Pop Games, we invest a lot of time playing in VR within our dedicated R&D department, known as Cherry Labs. We delve deep into VR locomotion, experimenting with a variety of wacky ways to just get around in a virtual world. Running was a pretty simple and fun mechanic, but how could we take this one step further? We're introducing agile locomotion locomotion, an, in an innovative intended form of locomotion which allows you to run, sprint, and kick a ball in VR with no physical discomfort. Uh, we live for social VR at Cherry Pop, but with this release we wanted to experiment even further with VR locomotion and tackle the impossible. Strike up a, uh, a game of five-a-side multiplayer football in VR. Agile Locomotion gave us the ability to do this with the use of two, and this is where it gets interesting, with the use of two move controllers acting as your feet. Natural arm motions provide Provide the base running and kicking me mechanic while a series of basic button presses control the more precise movements. VRFC is easy to pick up but harder to master. To play well, as with any sport, practice is key. And I'll leave it there. You can read the full thing. I think you said we were going to rapid fire. That was a. Yeah, well, this one I think deserves a little bit of extra explanation. Uh, just because, I mean, when you when you hear like the, first person football the game. The character models looked funky. I'm going to say, I'm going to state that. Yeah. Yeah. But it could be a lot of fun. I mean, I. But I mean, so does I look at I look at Rec Room uh, Soccer. That, or whatever that, shield soccer yeah the shield soccer thing oh. that's a lot of fun I have a lot of fun with that um, I'm interested to see how how the ball is it is the ball stuck on a string type thing like so you never played connect soccer did you no so there's a connect soccer and the way connect soccer worked is when you passed it there was a there's a the ball was on a string you couldn't you couldn't make it go other than to other players but the defender can make a move and step in and steal it that way. Like if you reached out, you could you could get in between if you stepped in the right spot. I wonder if it's going to be that. It's got to be that because there's no way you could I would really so. chase after the ball that way with the, with how much movement you're doing with the controllers to control kicking. Well, I'm just wondering because they say that it feels natural arm motions, but doing natural arm motions for your feet, like. I don't see how that works. So I'm sure that it does, and I believe the developers, when they say they've been doing R&D on this for a long time, I mean, this actual article is from the, the European PlayStation blog, so clearly they've got enough of a solid foundation there that PlayStation themselves are taking notice and being like, hey, this actually looks pretty good. Um, but the sort of the, the the interest factor for me is high on like, how do you make those move controls feet? Because I'm thinking, you know, obviously your feet are going to be pretty far to the floor. Are you going to be looking down? Are you just going to be doing this to run? Like, how do you do you kick? Like, I don't get it. Like, I, I physically can't mm -hmm. comprehend how you wrap that around. I think it's going to be a lot so, like the Kinect game, minus the so? kicking with your feet. So like, yeah. that's that's and that game that game was good, but it was very limiting with movement. Uh, the, the only downside to Virtual Reality Football Club is that it is going head to head with a certain little mouse. Uh, it will be released on February twenty seventh, the same. Uh, week is that? I assume that's EU boss. only because that's from the EU blog, so it may not be coming to the state side. I imagine it probably will. So actually, keep that in mind. But probably, I don't know. Yeah, it EU. might might be European 
only. It'll eventually end up over here, I'm sure. But for those of you well, that bigger are over, savvy enough, bigger than you already know how to get those games Europe. from the UK because you watch our show and you are smart. Uh, I am so smart. Next, uh, next so couple, I will rapid fire. 18 Levels by Winking Entertainment Trailer. It's a funny ass name. Uh, is going to be released for PSVR. 18 Levels is uh, Asian horror, um, mm -hmm. basically. It looks kind of a little bit puzzly, a little bit. It's first person, obviously. Uh, the trailer just has like a lot of slow mo pans of a room and then a creepy ass, like crying blood lady at the end. It is what it is. Um, it, it doesn't look particularly thrilling from the trailer, but I'm sure there's much more to it. And if uh, playing Pupil Wandering has taught me anything, it's that Asian survival horror is fucking terrifying. Next up, um, and take this one with a pinch of salt. Summer Funland is potentially coming to uh, PSVR soon after the Vive and Rift release. Now, if you haven't heard anything about Summer Funland, uh, essentially it is a... Think of your Peerhead Arcade, think of your Carnival Games, think of your Sports Bar VR. It's one of those, except it is on a much wider scale. It's a whole theme park uh, where you can play like find the creatures in the theme park, you can ride roller coasters, you can still do the small little games like whack-a-mole and that kind of stuff. If they pull it off, it's going to be, it looked really good. Graphically, actually, it looked really yes. impressive as well. It looked like you're actually at like a fucking Disney World or something where there's like fireworks. And it's not realistic and, graphics, yeah. it's, it's, it's got that it's cartoony. cartoon stylized, yeah. so it helps it out a little bit there. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Um, I bring this up, like I said, with a pinch of salt because there's a couple places that have listed it and only really said that it's going to be um, on the, the Oculus and the Vive. However, uh, VR Focus uh, put Summer Funland is scheduled to be released during February 2018 on both Steam and the Oculus Store with a PlayStation VR version following shortly after. So I'm assuming they know something we don't, despite the other places not mentioning uh, PSVR. So we're taking that with a grain of salt. But if it does end up on PSVR, it does look like a heck of a lot of fun. Um, Your rapid fire is not very rapid. It's not very rapid, is it? There's only three of them, so I'm, <laughs> I'm just I'm a little faster. Uh, all right. So then announced just this morning, actually, uh, a time of recording. Island Time is a desert island survival game for PSVR Rift and Vive. And it is by the developers of Manifest 99. Did you play that? No, you did. Yeah, I know. But I'm asking if you did. <laughs> no. Okay. So Manifest 99 was, uh, you were on a train uh, in the afterlife and you were sort of following the stories of large anamorphic animals. Uh, anthropomorphic. There you go. Sorry. I'm so bad at that word. I remember I had a hard time saying that word when we talked about it the last time. It's like it's like my my nemesis. Anyway, uh, Flight School Studio is the name of the studios, and they're basically released on this game, which is supposedly a survival horror, uh, not survival horror, sorry, a survival game set on a desert island. Um, so here's your, your little blurb on it. Island Time is a VR survival game set on a very small island, uh, very in parentheses, by the way. Uh, shipwrecked players need to use their wits to keep themselves alive, combining items to make new tools that will help them to scavenge food and defend themselves from threatening creatures. It looks less like the Minecraft definition of a survival game and more like, well, an actual survival game. You're not chopping down bits of woods to build a house, but instead digging up bamboo shoots to reach coconuts to, uh, or tying them to rocks to make spears to catch fish with. Eventually, you'll need to make something that can signal a rescue plane. The game uses an event system that determines uh, what amounts of resources players can use. Uh, and there is going to be a crab on the island that is voiced by Greg Miller. Uh, so kind of funny. From Slash kind of funny. IGN. Yeah. Uh, game over Greggy. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, I think, would drive me up the fucking wall, because that dude's voice gets on my nerves a little bit. I do like Greg a lot, but his voice is, is hyper. It's like yours when you first started. Uh, but, yeah, so the trailer for this game is fucking pitiful, as you would have seen. Uh, it's probably already finished behind us, but uh, essentially it just is you staring at a crab for, like, 30 seconds, and then it says, Island Time. Um, but it, I like the idea of a, of a sub island survival game in VR. I think it sounds mm -hmm. interesting. The cartoon crab, I mean, it's fun I mean, Greg's a funny guy. I think he could do... Uh, pull it off. Uh, do you think it'd be like Gary the Gull level humor, or do you think we'll get something a little better? I don't better? know. I, I felt that when I saw it initially, but I don't know, honestly. What, um, do you, what do you feel about learning a little bit more about it? I have to I have to, I have to know more before I'm like, yes or no. Like, just, I feel like never, there's not enough. You never want to speculate. You never want to just enough. come with me on this journey. No, just... because because for me, with, with this, it's like... Am I excited for a survival horror game? Do I think or survival, survival game? Horror, yeah, survival, survival game. You think? Do I think it'll work in VR? Yes. It's a very small island. 
It depends on resources. There's no building, but there's actual survivals. Like how, I'm thinking Stranded Deep in my head, but a smaller version of Stranded Deep. Hmm. So I'm interested to see kind of how that works. And if they do it right, yes, it'll be fine. But if it all depends on how, because you can say survival game. How survival, deep does it get? survival game means multiple things to lots of people. Right. So that's fair. That's where I'm at. I think I need uh, more, a more refined definition of what they think survival is. Other than survival, I think it'll probably be short. I think it'll be like maybe an hour, two hour experience, but it'll be good. I think it'll be good, but it'll be short. Is kind of my thought on it. But either way, it's uh, it's interesting. The game is Island Time, so check that out uh, if you want more information. Um, the next piece of news I put in here purely for my own benefit because I thought it, you know, I'd like to talk about it. It's nothing to do with VR. It's actually AR for a minute. Um, so AR, if you don't know the difference, is augmented uh, reality. is basically a mixture of real life and um, the virtual, where you mix one overlaying the other. Think Pokemon Go, etc. And um, British commuters uh, have been told that they should uh, experience a significant upgrade to the rail system pretty soon. And let me tell you, as an Englishman. Uh, as someone that spent 25 years catching the trains, they were shit. Like, really, really Name shit. Name a country besides Japan that has a good rail system. Dude, Japan, if they're a minute late, will send out an apology letter to the entirety of the country. Like, saying. we're so sorry that this train was one minute. Like, England, like, you, like, typically... That's like the US, too. 40 minutes, hour and a half late every time. Like, it was terrible. Uh, I mean, we had a robust system. It just, it was just, they were always delayed. It was You're like also, a You have to also remember, it was really old, probably, too. Like, Japan's got a new system in place. Sure, there's England no and US trains or, or anything. So, I mean, that's the kind of the point of this, is that they're actually looking to improve these uh, they're, they're like new uh, carriages, these new trains that they're building up. And one of the really cool things that I read that I thought was worth, why, why I'm bringing this up, is that uh, one of the ideas that they uh, have sort of put forward in the patent here um, is to include AR application, which utilizes Google Cardboard or smartphone, to highlight landmarks to passengers as they pass close to them, pointing out such historical areas as the locations of Viking villages near York or more fanciful creations such as a stampede of zebras wearing Newcastle United shirts near Newcastle. So like the the, the windows I guess would be tinted in such a way that you could uh, either watch it through them directly or you'd have like glasses you could put on for the journey just to make it more exciting. Um, what do you think about that? I don't know how they would do it, because depending on how fast the train goes. Because if it's looking out a window, your thing's going shoo, 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 eh, by that you. Fast. Not in England, they don't go that fast. I mean, it's, you're still going at least 40, 50 miles an hour. But you could still, like, simulate an event outside. Or even if it's just like a... Uh, like, uh, like the zebras are just like... If it's just like on? a history thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like there's a big tag that says, this is the Angel of the North. It was put here by whatever. You'd like that, but do you I have, would think. But do you have time to read it? That's what I'm saying. Like, by the time you're Probably. past it. Probably. That's that's my that's my my thing with it is when you're when you're there and you see it and you're like oh that's a, oh it's gone. <laughs> I guess that's that's a possible so, possible downside. I to think it. it's cool. I think AR in the in the world is going to become a big thing, mm. be, especially with the smartphones because smartphones yeah. now have it, and I I guarantee that companies are going to go beyond smartphones at some point. Uh, Google tried with the Google Glass and that didn't work, but I guarantee there will be something that happens as augmented Allegedly reality. Google has something else up their sleeve. I mean, um, look at look at Hololens for Microsoft like that. That is probably never going to become a consumer product, but look they at what that can do. Recently said you can lease those. Yes. Uh, yeah, which is kind of interesting. But they're also like $2,500. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uh, interesting sort of nuggets uh, from outside the world of PSVR, but also including PSVR, our last bit of news for the week comes from Facebook. Uh, Facebook has. That always scares me when Facebook is involved with virtual reality. <laughs> Facebook has put out a job list. They own Oculus. Uh, confirming social VR plans for mm -hmm. PSVR, mm -hmm. uh, but also a mystery headset with the name Monterey. Mm -hmm. So here's the uh, the news piece here. A job listing from Oculus parent company Facebook posted this week makes mention of a new headset and new platforms for its social VR plans. According to a LinkedIn posting, Facebook is looking for an innovation tech specialist to join its social VR team in Menlo Park. The successful candidate will work on a range of social projects, including Spaces, which launched in beta last year and allows Facebook friends to meet up in VR, share media, and play games. The posting can also be seen on Facebook's career page via a Google search search, although the page is not available when you click through. At one point, the listing notes that the candidates will build and extend workstations with productivity in mind, especially as we add PSVR, Windows headsets, Monterey, and mobile. 
Uh, this suggests a lot of big things for spaces and Oculus as a whole. The most eye-catching part is the mention of Monterey, which seems to confirm a new codenamed headset. Oculus has a tradition of codenaming its prototype hardware after coastal areas. DK2's prototype was codenamed Crystal Cove. CV1 was codenamed Crescent Bay. And the company's upcoming Six Degrees of Freedom, CDOF, standalone headset is currently codenamed Santa Cruz. Uh, we've actually already heard the Monterey codename before, though. Last year, just ahead of Facebook's F8 developer conference, Variety reported that this was the codename for an updated prototype for Santa Cruz. While that still may be the case, Santa Cruz was shown later on in the year at Oculus Connect under its original codename, despite the device having made plenty of progress since its 2016 reveal. It's also very possible that Monterey was a codename assigned to a soon-to-release Oculus Go standalone headset, which debuted uh, as a full product and not a prototype. If not that, then perhaps this could be a codename for a new Oculus headset that we are yet to see. Of course, the listing also makes mention of Sony's PlayStation VR and the new Windows headset, which suggests Spaces or other social VR projects might soon arrive on both. Uh, so have you like I don't know anything about spaces. Have you like looked into this at all? No, I know it. I mean, I've looked I've looked into it to see what it is, but that's about it. I've, I, again, Facebook scares me uh, with their privacy and all that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to give them the least amount of information I can. I see, um, you know what I think about when I think about Facebook and VR? Because that... they own Oculus, which is the scariest part. When that happened, that 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 excited me and terrified me at the same time. It was good that they picked up social. Oculus as a big platform, but yeah. It, it, have you seen like those movies and like I think there's like a like a Pixar movie or whatever where like there's like people just like slobs on the couch with VR headsets on that are like eating chips yeah it's called and... Wally is that it right <laughs> and then uh, I I haven't seen it but um they're like and that that's like their future like when you think about now mm -hmm. right you're at home uh, maybe not you because you're a bachelor you're playing Overwatch but for someone like me or like uh, married couples and stuff like that you spend an awful lot of time at home on the couch mm -hmm. and when you're home on the couch you're on Facebook or occasionally you'll be on Facebook when you go on your break at work you check Facebook when you're you know whatever you check Facebook so now if they add the virtual reality element of this into here you have instances of um people that are very casual to the to this universe they don't play games Maybe they don't watch movies, or there is no movies really for VR. Um, and they're they're told that if they put this headset on, they can be whoever they want, look like whoever they want, create their own avatar, or whatever, and then they can chat with random people from their past like chat or rooms. whatever. Right? It's like VR chat, but or rec room, but for for the generate for baby boomers and for people that are going to be sat on their couch pretending to be someone else. You're saying for it's for them, time. but it's for us. Well, because I think I think the way I look at this kind of stuff is like i think my parents my parents know about vr they've tried vr they're they think it's cool but they're not going to buy it for themselves and i think that's where we're at i think what this is setting up for us and then i'd even see like say like my brother and all that like if you think about it we grew up with smartphones for the most part like smartphones are later later on in our life cycle but it was early enough that we've adopted very quickly quickly to them think about our parents parents they didn't ad didn't adopt the smartphones. Our parents kind of did, and I feel like that's where we're at with VR. We're, we're, we kind of get VR, but at some point, the generation after us is going to get like this crazy VR experience, and they're going to be the ones that are in it, and I think that's what this is built for, is that next generation experience. And I'm not saying generation as in like PSVR 2, I'm saying like people generations, uh, whatever the hell, like, I don't even know, but what are we, Gen Y, Gen X, Millennials? I'm Millennial, technically. You're Millennial. But whoever's I'm after Gen that. Z, technically. Whoever's after that. Gen Z is um, in between X yeah. and Millennial. But whatever whatever happens to the generation after us, I think this is setting that up because then it, it, cause think of how many things to us are normal that are weird to our parents. But think about also how parents basically took over Facebook because when Facebook first started, it was all kids. Mm -hmm. And the parents like were kind of like but, skeptical of it. And now kids are on because, Twitter, parents that's are because, on Facebook. That's because parents grew up with computers. Facebook will stay there for the parents. This next step will be for the younger generation to get in. And it's going to be the cycle. I think they'll still the adopt the young, I think they'll still adopt Some will, yes. So the younger generations getting in so i'm gonna get i'm gonna use the generation after us they get in there's still gonna be people like me and you like oh let's get in this too that's gonna be the way it's gonna work and eventually right. it will go that crowd but usually it starts low and goes up like this it's basically gonna be like a vr hookup app so, isn't it? probably i mean i'm point. i'm i think what i think monterey is is just a facebook branded headset think so. that's what i think it is because people know the brand of facebook outside of like do you like the name world. monterey it's a code name i mean it is a thing hmm. it's, it's the name monterey. of the place it's a new podcast. So, no. 
Um, not at all. But no, I, I, I think it's cool. I, I've always said Facebook's going to do something and they're working on stuff, but I think this is built for the next generation and it's going to be what Facebook did where you had the young people get it initially and then maybe, yes, the older generation, but at some point, the young generation that starts it will then be the older generation and then they'll have something and it just continues on. It's a cycle. And the cycle continues until we're all slops, basically. That's what you think. Uh, so that's your news roundup for this week. Let's move on to the spotlight. And the spotlight shines firmly this week on Apex Can Construct. I read the uh, press release from them? Please So do. people know what it is. Yeah. So press release from Fast Travel Games who developed it. Swedish VR games developer Fast Travel Games has launched their debut title Apex Construct for PlayStation VR, an action-adventure game built exclusively for VR, where players need to explore a shattered worlds and cover its secrets while defending themselves from synthetic creatures utilizing an upgradable bow and arrow and a shield setup. Whew, that's a long sentence. It's a good one. Progressing through the adventures, player through the adventure players will gradually reveal what actually happened to the world they once knew and what their role is in the drawn out conflict between two powerful AIs. Apex Construct delivers full immersion through highly interactive environment, which is both beautiful and perilous, allowing players to explore the surroundings at their own pace by using two PS Move controllers with different locomotion options like full locomotion or or different movement options like full locomotion and teleportation. Uh, another thing I want to point out, following the PSVR re release, Apex Construct will launch for Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, and mixed Windows Mixed Reality headsets on March 20th. So PC will be getting it a month later. Interesting. Yeah. That never happens. We're almost always the last to get a VR title. Cool. So, just one point, that's, that's partially why I want to read it, because that, that way it's coming. Your reading skills are back. Just because they, I, they, they disappeared got, yesterday. I'm, I'm a Red Bull in. <laughs> yeah. So Apex Construct is, uh, it, yeah, it's it's everything you just said. Basically, you wake up uh, in this kind of bizarre sort of think of it as the in between, right? You know, like in the Matrix, where you're like in that area where everything's white, and you can. I've never things seen the in. Matrix. You're the worst. Um, <laughs> so you're in, in the Matrix Thanks. for people that have seen the fucking Matrix. Um, there's an area. Have you seen between, the fucking Matrix? I have seen all the Matrixes. Even the fucking Matrix. Even the fucking Matrix, the <laughs> porno version. Rule so, thirty-four. There's got to be a porno version. Yes. So there's a... Uh, Rule 34. There's like the real world and there's the computer world. And in between is an area uh, that's just kind of like nothingness. And that's how you kind of start the game. And then very swiftly you are thrown into what is essentially a broken earth. It is just kind of like... It kind of looks like Earth, but all the buildings are kind of knocked over or sideways, like Inception style, or there's like tears in the fabric of reality. You can actually see little areas occasionally where you can see the, the construct. You can see the behind part of this fabricated reality that you're in. And you're told that basically uh, at some point in time that Earth was torn apart. Uh, I forget the name of it. It began with an S. Like It was like the... the stealth or something something happened anyway and then the world tore apart and um or the split and when that happened uh everything died pretty much except for two sentient ai beings one is called father the other is mother um now father is the one that brings you back into the fold you don't really know what you are to be honest uh you can see that you have hands um you know how to use a bow gun apparently um but that's about all that you know there's never a point in the game that i found at least and i didn't get all the way to the end i got pretty far um that you like look in a mirror or anything and um so you basically father's like sort of tries to fill you in and he's kind of like okay so the world's fucked <laughs> and you need to try and like fix this but before we can fix this you should know that mother wants to kill you and she's got like robot dogs and drones and sentries and all kinds of horrible shit that's waiting to to take you out so the first thing we have to do is because you're kind of like you kind of learn that you're sort of hiding in a little base in this weird alternate world and um, she is honing in very quickly on your base so you have to start this um sort of uh, find the ability to do this invisibility cloak for your base so mother doesn't know where you are so that's the whole kind of beginning part of the game is like how do we protect our base from mother so that she can't get us um 
And you learn that Mother is quite a sadistic bitch, um, you know. But there's definitely more going on um, than it first seems. So as you're going around the world, you're picking things up. And like I said, everything is so clear. Like, I really can't say enough for the graphical and you're, fidelity And you're playing on PS4 Pro before the day one patch. I played PS4 Pro before the day one patch. And on a Gen 1 headset. Everything was crystal. Like... Uh, I pick up a clipboard and everything is perfectly legible uh, at any distance. Um, it is just like picking up a real clipboard. Uh, but so, like you're picking up these things around the world and they're saying things like, this is a test to see if father can read this, I don't, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And then you're kind of like, you start basically finding notes that were left by what appears to be you. Mm -hmm. But obviously it can't be you because you just sort of came into existence, right? So then you start to get hints that maybe there were others. You'll find like... Uh, a bow and arrow on the floor somewhere by a trap or something. You're like, that looks a lot like my bow and arrow, <laughs> you know. And like, you get these kind of hints that maybe you're one of many attempts to try and break the construct and to and to um, to take, you know, your your world back, and that you've just continuously been failing over and over again. That's kind of the vibe that you start getting. Um, but yeah, the the main weapon of the game is this awesome bow. It feels great. Um, it has a shield, which is just a left trigger. So you're holding the bow in your left hand. Uh, Left trigger brings up a shield in front of the bow. Very simple to use, very easy, very intuitive. And then, of course, when you hover your right hand anywhere close to the bow, an arrow just magically appears. You trigger, pull back, let go. Normal bow, uh, bow and arrow function. Uh, you have various types of arrows, like electric arrows and stuff, that will also be utilized with like the environment for like opening switches and doors and things like that. Um, you have a really robust inventory system. Like the inventory system is actually really really good. Uh, so when you get like, let's say you you can go to a vending machine in the game buy a health drink. So you get this health drink, but you don't want to use it right now. You press the uh, triangle, I believe, on the left stick to bring up the inventory system, which is basically just a selection of slots, and you can literally put your drink in a slot, and then it will like shrink down and just like hover around but it's all in like 3d and everything so it looks really cool you can put your bow away if you feel like it and just kind of ignore that entirely you can put grenades in your inventory system there's little trophies you find around the world there's key cards that you find around the world um it's so in depth it really is just a wonderful story beautiful graphically and the movement is stellar um basically every type of movement that you could ask for so you have you have teleportation which in this term like if you just want to teleport you can just teleport and it won't make a difference is that is that the default setting no, it's both. Like, both is default. Okay. Like, your your movement is both by default. So you have, you always can teleport if you want to, but you always can move as well. Now, you do get to change um, in terms of, like, do you want incremental turning or smooth turning and that kind of stuff. Uh, basically, it does all the turning. So if you hold your, your button to move forward and then you look this way, you're going to start going that way. If you look this way, you're going to start going that way. If you wiggle your move left, right, back, you're going to start going left, right, back if you um you know hold the whichever buttons go left or right you're going to smooth turn that way if you teleport you're going to tell so like you can literally move like four different ways to get anywhere which means that in the in the midst of like a particularly nasty bow and arrow fight against a robot dog you got a lot of options you got a lot of um you know movability and and uh agility that you can use to your advantage um the bow and arrow feels great feels really uh good to use in intuitive i find that you have to aim a little higher than you kind of wanted it to go so there is a little bit a of a drop arc um, Did you die during your playthrough? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happens on, like, game over screen? Uh, you just kind of go back to a checkpoint. checkpoint? Yeah. Cool. Um, and then just continue from there. If anything, the checkpoint is usually just, like, where you were stood two seconds ago. It's very, very... There's no, Forgiving. like, backtracking, like, by, by large cool. volumes. It's puzzles. Not, it's not far point. No, not at all. Puzzles everywhere. Um, really good puzzles. And here's here's where it gets super interesting. And this is, this is a part that sold me on it. Because I really liked the world building. I love the story, the sci-fi. I'm a big sci-fi fan i loved all of that the weapon felt great i love that here's where it really really sold me as being like a true second generation vr game is that there are multiple computer terminals throughout the the world that you can actually use like a real computer so um if you've if you're not super familiar with um how to use like code and stuff with computers uh anything that you can do by clicking a mouse you can also do by typing in code that says do this right like you want to open a program you can open up in in our macbook for example the terminal uh is like your code based input you can type in open 
you know, Safari or whatever, and, and it will do that for you just from the, the code that you're typing. These terminals do that. So you have to go up to them and type like D-I-R space L-I-S-T for directory listing, mm -hmm. and it will tell you the files that are on the computer. And then you're like, okay, these are the files. So one of them is called arrow, uh, open space arrow, and then it opens the file. And then like, and some of them will have like passcodes and stuff in them for doors, and other ones will just have like monologue information, audio information. But you're actually having to type this code into the computer with a real keyboard and your real fingers to make this stuff happen which just feels wonderful it feels so like immersive and just mm -hmm. good like it just felt really really solid because i didn't think they'd go that in depth you see a computer terminal in a vr game usually you're thinking like there's no way i can play well with i think this, of right? job simulator it's got two buttons right exactly it's got like go or stop or whatever but no these are fully fledged computer terminals with actual code you have to actually and each one is this like you approach it the same way you go up you type your directory list and everything see what's on this one okay open this oh, file there's any and cheat codes inside of there maybe maybe I bet you there's hidden. some secrets in there yeah i would love to see like uh someone find a secret like open like mother or whatever and see if you could get access to mother or whatever uh really really smart game so you have a combination of some of the best graphics i've ever seen on a psvr game like sta like seriously like and they're not going for realism, so bear that in mind. There's a very uh, unique kind of art style to this game, but they pull that art style off really well. Everything is smooth, feels great. Some of the best movement I've ever seen in PSVR. You have a great story. Um, uh, the only thing I would say is that lengthwise, it's lengthy, but it, it's not too short, but it's definitely not too long either. It's kind of like, if you were looking for like a 10 to 15 hour game here, you're probably not going to get that out of it. I, I made it a good like three hours in before I started getting a little bit of a headache and had to dip out for a while uh, and I'm still going to go back into it and take uh, take another gander at it so I, I can't actually tell you how long the game is completely I wish I could um, but I do know that it was it felt to me like it was worth the money as far as I got and I was not at the end so uh, that that much I'm you know I'm confident in um so, yeah, so basically you have this kind of wonderful example of what I believe to be built from the ground up for VR, second generation VR games. Um, and I had a really good time with it. And um, I recommend it to everyone. I honestly... I, like I said at the beginning of the review, I knew nothing of this game at all. Uh, only the trailer that I'd seen um, from GDC. And, uh, I found the dev in a Facebook group I was in. I was like, ooh, this looks real interesting. <laughs> right. And uh, I was like, this looks... I immediately thought of you when I saw it because we played very different type of games. I prefer the more cartoony, fun, happy games. I honestly you're more feel a, like you'd really like this. You're more of a realistic... Not realistic, but like more of a... I'm going to call it a game type of game. Like traditional <laughs> game in VR. Right. Versus I'm more of like... I feel happy, like you would like this time. because the art style is cartoony enough mm -hmm. that it doesn't feel is there, like real Is there anything life. jumping at your face? No. Cool. No, I mean, there's people shooting well, dogs, that's, shoot things that's, at you. That's but you, fine. You if there's no spiders up. coming at my face, no, like far point. None of that. Because that was... None of that. Not, I was not At least as far it. as I got, yeah. there was none of that. Um, yeah, so I think you really like it. And I think that you guys would really like it, too. I think you'd have a, a, a great time with it. So, yeah, um, full disclosure, the devs get, did give us the key for this one, um, which, you know, a lot of people think that if you're praising a game, it's only because you got it for free. And if you actually spent the $30, then you probably wouldn't be as positive. I promise you, I, I I have always, always been honest on this channel when it comes to this type of, of stuff, especially when I hate the fact that I spent money on a game. But um, but I would happily drop $30 on this game, uh, uh, quite quite simply. I, I spent the 30 bucks or what, 21 I think it was at the time, on Sprint Vector, happily, uh, after playing Sprint Vector, I could tell you directly after, very happy that I spent that money. Um, we did not get a code for that game. So it's a similar principle. Like, I know if, 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 if I would have been pissed off or not if I spent the money. Apex Construct is absolutely worth the money, I think. Um, especially if you're just like, you're like a one game a week guy then, and you have to choose between this and to run Dorothy Run, yeah. get Apex Construct. Uh, really great game. So yeah, that's my, my spotlight on that. Cool. So um, now I brought up a phrase in the review and also in that little spotlight that you may have uh, noticed, which I um, is a kind of a, a phrase that's being thrown around a little bit more lately, and that is uh, second generation PSVR games um because we've had we've had a launch we've had our first batch we had our battle zone and we had our rigs and we had our arkham vr and we had job simulator playstation worlds playstation worlds far, far point resident evil i've considered gen one 
Yeah, I think they were like the... End of the first gen. Yeah, kind of like the highlights of the uh, reaching first. the ends of Gen 1. Now we're at, I would say, Phase 2 of uh, PSVR's life. I think we're at the part where uh, games are being made for VR, not necessarily ported to VR, although there are still some Skyrim. being ported and stuff. <laughs> that's well, a, you that's know, a big one that got ported. Wipeout is getting its update soon and that kind of stuff. But, um, but I think we're at a point where there are more totally 100% made, made fresh for, for VR. VR games. The Inpatient, uh, Moss, uh, Bravo Team, um, Firewall, Apex Constructs, Firewall, etc. And we're kind of hitting that second wave of uh, big PSVR titles. So what I wanted to kind of do was do kind of like a state of the union for PSVR. So now that we've had, um, you know, the first couple of these second generation titles, Sprint Vector, Apex, Moss coming next week. Um, I wanted to talk about... You mean Rec Room? Yeah. Well, Rec Room is kind of weirdly in the middle, I think. But, like, quality control. Because we talked about earlier how, like, the, the, the drunken bar fight devs took out moving because <laughs> right. it didn't realize people right. wanted it uh, and then how Inpatient kind of flopped even though they were trying something spectacular uh, I thought Inpatient was pretty good I actually enjoyed it I, I don't think I would have been happy uh, well I did actually spend $40 on it that, that one that one is one I will fully admit I'm pissed that I spent $40 on but I would have spent 20 happily 25 happily on the Inpatient I, ha I did like the game I just thought it was priced too high and there are many games that are pricing themselves out of the league of what they probably should be priced in um you know and, and then we have a game like apex which is only 30 dollars sprint vector which was 21 it launched uh, 30 uh when it's not on sale and and those games have, have come out and just like blown everybody away with how good and uh, and solid they are so now we're at the first batch of second generation psvr games how do we feel about this all of these things quality control pricing like where are we at as far as playstation vr I've said it before, I think our base for what a good game is in VR has gone up. I still think there's a bunch of shit that comes out. Um, I still think there's a lot of people that still view VR as a gimmick, still view VR as a money grab, whatever they may be viewing it as, uh, a easy place to port to, whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. Um, I feel like there's a lot of games that are still going to come out for that that are just kind of catalog fillers and not really highlights. But I think the highlights, we're getting more. And they're not necessarily the big highlights that Farpoint was or Skyrim were, but it's the solid ones that continue. Because let's 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 talk about Wii U. Yeah. Because Switch has sold more consoles than Wii U. Yeah. And what was the big complaint with Wii U? No games. Yes, you had big AAA titles every I don't know six to eight months that from Nintendo and nothing in between. PSVR. I was scared because when Resident Evil dropped, okay, that's a big title. Farpoint dropped, okay, that's six months. What's going to happen? And I, I still feel like in between there, there were some things, but nothing really stand out. Right now, the roadmap we have, there's no AAA game that I can think of, like traditional AAA thinking game. I, I would consider present, potentially Firewall to be AAA if it turns out the way it looks, which would be fan-fucking-tastic. Um... But there's no AAA game like Skyrim that's that we are aware of right now that is coming out this year that we're looking forward to. If, uh, if you're not including Moss or Bravo Team as AAA. I don't think those are AAA. I don't either. That's um, what I'm saying yeah. if you don't include this. So, but how do you sustain that player base without having these big names being dropped? And I'm sure we'll get something at E3. We That's how, that's how it's going to happen. Um, but as of right now, pre-E3 2018, we have Firewall, we have Bravo Team, which Bravo Team I'm a little, a little shaky on because of what happened with Impatient. Uh, we have Moss, like you said. We have Sprint Vector. We have uh, Apex Construct. Like the lineup that we have had, I I said the other or the other day in a post. I think the last two weeks in PSVR have been the best two weeks overall. Make it three. Next I week. don't think it's been yeah. well. It's to be determined because Moss could flop. I don't think I don't it think will. A, a chance. In I don't think it will. Yeah. But there's always there's always. But, but impatient. Look what happened with impatient. But the impatient never got played before it got released. Yes, and but Moss I'm saying there's but there's played. but there's always a chance. Yeah. So small chance. But chance. but 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 there's, there's small as a match. Yeah. <laughs> but like. I don't know. I feel like even when Skyrim dropped, like Skyrim had a lot of oomph behind it, a lot of a lot of power because of the name. But I feel like Skyrim as a VR game as a whole is not a great VR game. 
it's a great game to play in VR, but it is not made from the ground up for VR. It's not this immersive experience. I mean, it doesn't experience. utilize VR the same way that a game that's made for yes. VR can utilize Yes, VR. and I'm not saying it's a bad game by any stretch of imagination to play in PSVR. I'm just saying it is not a game when I think of... <laughs> When I think of PSVR in the future, like you said, we've already got more and more games that are being made for PSVR, and I like that because they're going in and PSVR has quirks. Everything has quirks. So they're going in and like, how do we utilize the move? How do we utilize motion controls? How do we do this and that? And it's just like, they're they're learning and figuring that stuff out now. Um, I think there's still a long way to go on some things. Um, tracking being the big one, and I don't know if that's a, could be a hardware thing, could be a software thing. I think I some know. games get it more right than yes. others, so I'm willing to say that a lot of it is software based. And also, there I think some, some, of, some of it relies on the player too, because like there's so many people still to this day that go into like the forums uh, and stuff online and they say uh, everything's blurry. What do I do? And you're just like, did you adjust your IPD settings? Did yeah. you put your camera up high? Like, do you know? There's kind of like dude adjusting the the. The, IPD. Yeah, like adjusting that made a huge difference. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. crazy. And it's and it's, sometimes it's even as simple as like lowering or raising the, the lens the set, a tiny yeah. bit can just suddenly bring everything into clarity. You know. So I it's, mean, there's uh, always going to be the screen door effect. But uh, no, I'm I'm way more. <coughs> excuse me. As as I've said before, many 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 times, end of last year, and even even I think majority of last year, I was not. I think I've said I was not hyped for PSVR. I don't think PSVR. it was until Skyrim came out, that, um, and it was a success that you yes, were kind of. Because I was I was leery because like there was nothing to get behind. I mean, Farpoint was cool, but I. For, look at the same far point. I don't think has had the staying power. I think. I, I think they, they. I you know. I I will argue that point because of the one v one versus mode they added recently, and a lot of people are still playing that. Like a lot of people play that daily. But I don't. I don't know if people are picking it up like they were would when like when like with new players coming with new players getting headsets. Are they picking up far point? They picking up Skyrim? Or are they picking like, up otherwise? I feel. I feel like the. It's, I have no basis for this argument. Feel, yeah, I, I, just, don't have, I don't have numbers, obviously, but I feel like Skyrim is probably yeah, a bigger one. draw. But I feel like Farpoint is is in the top five and will remain in the top five. But do you think people know about Farpoint? Yeah, I do. Because of the aim controller. Because people are like, what's that big white thing that you're using there, buddy? And um, and that's you assume... the aim game. Yeah. You know. So, yeah, I, th I think it's gotten a lot better. And I think the, the quality overall has gotten better. Like I said before, I think there's a lot of junk that still doesn't need to exist um well that's a, that's an interesting point that you bring up though because you, we talk about junk vr games because i feel like if a game's bad in vr it's almost like way worse than if it's bad not vr because vr is such a such a delicate experience to break immersion VR is, can, a game in vr is, that's not good flat could still be great in vr right but I think that like you can break immersion so easily in VR, and once you break immersion, or if you break it enough, then you're not in VR anymore, and you're not enjoying mm -hmm. the game. You're playing the game. But I feel like um, you know we obviously half of our channel is VR, half of our channel is indies, mm -hmm. right? So it's interesting that we maybe almost pick on the indie VR games a little bit because we expect so much more from VR indie than we do from regular indie. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at the, like a lot of these games that were like hyped about, like Sprint Vector and uh, and Apex Construct and stuff, if you look at those studios, those are indie studios. <laughs> they're not AAA developers. Apex Construct, fast travel games, they're not a fucking AAA developer. It's their first game. Right, it's a first fucking game. And it turned out great. So like there's kind of like, there is a definitely a weird line where you want the smaller guys to continue but i feel like we push vr guys more and i don't know if it's just because we love the platform so much but like with indie developers we'll let a lot of shit slide that we wouldn't let slide in a vr game I, Do you find that i don't agree that with you that think so? i think i i've always i'm always a fan of just don't have have or have less bullshit on a platform like yeah. i've i've stated that different ways before but i i have good content, and it, the good content will rise to the top, obviously, but you, I say it about the PlayStation Store in general. There's too much BS on the PlayStation Store that finding good games sometimes is a pain in the ass unless it's a top seller. Yeah. Like, I'm sure there's so many games that we have not seen on PlayStation, and we play the shit out of PlayStation. We yeah. search through the stores. It's way sure easier there. to find them on there than Xbox, though, personally, I think. I think it's easier to find them on Switch than Xbox. The Xbox Store, to me, is I do it online a on horrible Xbox. experience. I do I do most of my shopping like through a browser. Yeah, it I, makes it I, easier. I think I would have to, because I don't know of, a, of an efficient way to do it on their so online store, because it only shows well, you like eight games. Well, the question is, is that just you not knowing? Because you can find them on there. I know where they're at. If you search so, for them, maybe. No, no, there's, I, there's, there's 
tiles down near the bottom you can search for. Oh, maybe it's just me not knowing it then. So but it, it, but even there. then, like, you know, I could still but figure that shit out easier on PlayStation. But it's the same thing with PlayStation, though. Like, PlayStation, what when you log into the store, the first thing you see on the left-hand side, left side of PlayStation is usually featured, and then they have some sort of highlight of something, some ad for whether it's a sale or whatever. But then PSVR. when you go to those tabs, they're broken down in a manner that makes it easy. Not necessarily. And they let you filter by, like, AZ or high-low or new-old or whatever. Yeah, but they're not necessarily broken down in an efficient way how many times have you been searching for something it's like new stuff and there's a bunch of i don't know themes avatars mixed in with all the other shit that you're like i don't care about that show me the games mm. and that's where i think i that's where I, I have the issue with with playstation is that kind of thing but getting back to the point of i is do we are we harder in on vr indie devs i would kind of yes kind of no uh, part of me says yes just because like you said we want the platform to be successful and i've always I'm a quality over quantity person. Give me a good game that is worth my money, and I will praise you to the heavens. Uh, give me a shitty game, like I don't know, uh, Hundred Foot Robot Golf. I will. I will tell you. I will. There's nobody in this world I will would tell to buy that game. I think it's that bad, and that's not a knock on Even the devs. Even when it was free, you told yeah, me that's not a, that's not a knock on the devs. It's just that experience is horrible, and I think you should avoid it. Hmm. And there's very few games like that. I mean, on on this channel, I can think of another one, which you can't buy anymore. In a kung fu game, oh, that's yeah. another game they you don't that shit, you don't want to play. And I don't know. I just I just think the 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 bar for the games has definitely gone up, and it's definitely gotten way better because they've learned stuff or they've seen stuff and all that kind of, and everything going on. But I still think the people that are below that bar are going to hurt even even more because the bar has gone up. Yeah, but it, I'm also like you said, it's up. a case of like. The cream rises to the top, though, right? So, like, if, if there's now, I would say, and um, we've talked about it before, but I think there's a good profit margin for VR. Uh, VR developers came out a while back, uh, early in, in the early days, and said they were making a profit off the games. Uh, it was a lot of work to put in, but they were making a profit, mostly because even though there was a smaller install base for a PSVR game at that time, the people that were there were rabid for games. Much like with the Switch, like how the indies are doing so well, it's because, you know, there hasn't been a Mario game in a couple months, so everyone's just like, give me whatever's available. Like, I'll buy Ace of Seafood, sure, bring it mm -hmm. out. But but, um, you know, I think it's kind of a similar principle of just, like, there may be a smaller base, but the people that are there are buying more games. If they were willing to put their money down to buy the headset to begin with, likelihood is they have a decent disposable income to some extent, and that they're going to pick up at least one, maybe two uh, new games every week or fortnight. So... I don't think it would be every week. That's rare that people pick up games every week. Well, we do it for the show, but... Yes. I mean, yeah. If, I, if, if we, we didn't, didn't have, have a show, show, we probably... I wouldn't buy anywhere yeah. near the amount of games that I do. Yes. But, um... But yeah, but I think it's... Uh, I think the State of the Union is good. I think I think we're in a solid place. I do love that the, the quality... Ha, the bar has been risen in quality. Mm -hmm. Like you said, there's still the occasional duff in there. Uh, you know, like we looked at Run Dorothy Run this morning and watched the trailer when we were both just like, no. Uh, so it's... Yeah, it's... There's, there's two things, so... Between last year and this year, and that's no offense, by the way, to run Dorothy, run Dev. So it's just, just compared to the trailer, other, it's, it's the way it is. Compared yeah. to other things, they're they, it's the it's the way the world works. It got our attention. Yeah, there's people who watch other VR shows and not ours because they got their attention. It's the way it works. Yeah. Um, but the one thing compared to last year, this year, I can say two things. One, I can definitively say the one thing holding the PlayStation VR back is. The move controllers. It's the one thing holding back. Do I think they're coming anytime soon? No. <laughs> Do I think they're working on something? Yes. Um, the other thing I think that has me excited is the sales going on right now are being highlighted on PlayStation Blog. They're being highlighted more and more in the PlayStation-centric areas. So when E3 happens, I'm, I'm interested to see what E3 is going to do this year. Because last year I was kind of like, uh, I don't think VR is going to be that big just because the install base install base is now getting up. It's still not huge com when you compare it to the... I, I don't actually know. don't know what the latest numbers are. I'd be it's really over 2 million. It's over 2 million. That was the last time we checked, though, yes. which was like a couple months ago. Yeah, but you're yeah. not going to hit a million in two months. No, but also they just had this gigantic ass sale. So Well, the sale's going on. They're probably going to do it after the sale. Right, be like, hey, we sold this many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but if you compare that, though, to the, what is it, 60, 70, 80 million, I don't know how many PlayStation are out there now that are out there. So that's still like a 10% thing. So E3, I'm interested to see. 
because people during E3 either get super pissed at VR or super excited about VR. Right. Like there's there's that there was that dynamic. There's nobody that I met. It's kind of hilarious like, actually watching the chat lose its ever loving mind about it. But you know the funny thing about it is that all the people that were slagging it off while it was on there are the same people that creep into the PSVR forums at some point and say, guys. I was wrong. <laughs> because I, there are people that haven't tried it. And there are people that... But there's that, also people know. that I, I think are against it. Because <coughs> we say, you look, when you put the headset on experience it, it's, it's fantastic and it's great. But there are people who are going to be against it because they don't they don't like that concept of how to play a game like that. And I, that's their opinion. That's I, fine. I understand yeah, it. but that, it doesn't mean you have to shit on everyone else's parade. Yeah, Mr. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to buy a teleportation game. <laughs> Fucking or did fuck it. Xbox's interface and fuck Overwatch. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I've, I've always come out <laughs> afterwards and admitted my faults. <laughs> anyway, but uh, no, I, yeah. I don't know. I just I, I'm excited for E3. I'm interested to see how Sony's going to handle it, just because of what's happening. I still think PSVR at E3. We I don't want to get too hyped because it's going to be like last year, where there's going to be maybe it's just going to be a, be a role. I maybe think, they'll focus on some of well, the games they showed. last I think time. they're going to do what they did last year, where the the pre E3 show is going to have a lot of VR games. Right. And then the E3 show, there's going to be... F I'm I'm curious to see a couple things. One, I'm curious to see a Star War another Star Wars IP coming out because the way EA has handled that shit, you know Star Wars, Disney, is trying to figure out what they can do with that. Uh, rumor Take has it away it, from EA. Well, rumor has it they're trying to pull the license. Good. Um, which I don't know what the agreement is, so there's a whole legal side of that. But I think there's going to be three to five PSVR games that we don't know about that are going to be announced, whether they're small or big. Don't know. There's going to be one bomb that happens, which was Skyrim last year. Mm. Um, I think Doom was announced there, but I think Skyrim was like the atomic bomb. Like Doom was the Doom was announced Doom... at the Bethesda conference. Yeah, so Doom was like, was like the was carpet kept secret. Was the carpet bomb? Yeah, fucking atomic bomb. Yeah, uh, we're gonna have one of those. I really, personally, I hope it's something tied to Uncharted and Naughty Dog or Last of Us in Naughty Dog. Uh, I don't think that's likely, but that's because yeah. again, going back to things I've said constantly, I'm gonna I stick know. behind you it. Always is, talk about Uncharted you the, and you need VR. The big, you need... I just don't think that game works in VR. I d it doesn't have to be in charge, just a big Sony IP being put into VR. And that, to me, is Sony saying, hey, you know that thing we keep talking about that you you, you apparently buy quite a few of? I think they're underestimating how well Wipeout's going to do based off the fact it goes VR. Because I think most people thought it was going to have VR when they released the Omega Collection as it was. But I think you're talking about a big Sony IP. I mean, Wipeout is a huge yeah, but, Sony IP. But Wipeout's not as big as Uncharted, God of War, no, 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 uh, Last no, of Us. That's what I'm saying. Like Those, that, those pinnacle ones, right. I think, need to put their flag in... Even again, even if it's just an add-on for them at this point, like I'm cool for like, experience. hey, you get a, you get a, hey, you already own Uncharted. Here's a Uncharted well, the VR Last Guardian experience. experience actually turned out pretty. That's good, what I'm saying. Like you know? they they need to do that, but a full version of that. Yeah. Especially for last I'm, uh, I'm really excited for Blood and Truth, actually. I think London Studios is going to make some real moves this year in terms of, like, really showcasing what can be done. But They're Sony's darlings. That's London's they are. They're, yeah. Super massive. Have so. fallen from uh, from grace, I think, a bit. And, and London Studios. Well, London there. Studios just hasn't done anything. Not for, That's yeah, why. Since, they, did, they did really since, well, and they haven't done anything. Uh, PSVR since, World. Yeah. But, I mean, if they're putting all their efforts into this, then that's hopefully going to show when it releases. Hopefully. All right, great. So that is your State of the Union for PSVR after the first batch of second-generation PSVR titles has been released. And there's still a couple more to go, so we'll keep you abreast of the situation as we meet Quill and her her buddies and, uh, and Bravo team gets a release and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, and that's your show. So, thanks a lot for tuning in to Codename Morpheus, episode 27. Um, just throwing it out there, as per usual, every every time we do this show. Really, really so much from our hearts, thank you. We know we're not the only choice that you have to get your PSVR news, so the fact that you do come to us on a weekly basis and get it and comment and, and answer our questions and watch our reviews and do all that kind of stuff, it really does mean the world to us and um, we're forever grateful for, for anyone that, that uh, engages with us in any size, shape or form. Um, we also uh, have a live stream coming up on March 12th. 11th and 12th. Uh, yeah. Starting March 11th. Really? Yeah, Sunday, was, March 11th. I was like 12th or 13th, I thought. No. I may want to double check my dates. Yeah. yeah. You've already screwed that one up. That yeah, up one. Yeah, yeah. The 11th yeah. is Sunday, the 12th is Monday. 
and then we're off Tuesday, so we're not going to record that Tuesday because I'm going to sleep. Okay. Well, anyway, we have a stream coming up, 11th to 12th of March. Uh, it's a 24-hour stream. Clearly, me, I'm running it. Me and Keegan are, <laughs> yeah, both going to try Weezy, and stay awake. Weezy should the be whole. there, too. He's going to try to be there all 24 hours as yeah, well. Yeah, we're going to try and do it like as a duo this time. I won't be sleeping in the corner snoring and making him feel bad. Yeah. Um, but we oh, are going to be showcasing a bunch of VR during that time. We actually have been talking to developers about giving away keys to, so we're trying to get our mitts on a bunch of keys that we can give away during the live stream for VR and indie and everything else that we represent on the show. We have at least so. three. I don't want to say what they are, but we have at least three that... Yeah, we're still gathering. We've, got, we, we we've heard back from. We hopefully have more. some uh, yeah. some more in the in the pipeline. So, uh, massive thank you to a the developers that are helping us support that. B able gamers and C all of you for helping us be able to do cool things like that. <laughs> um, that's it. You have anything you want to add? One plus one is two. Great. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And as always, welcome, welcome to, to the, the second, second level. level. Bye. Bye.